Hello everyone. Today talking about the semi equivalent. There are many occlusion of coronary arteries that do not present with classic semi criteria on ECG. Such ECG findings have been looked for as semi equivalent that triggered the emergency physician to consult the cardiologist for revascularization therapy immediately. So let's see what all to keep in mind. First and the most important one is the new or presumed left bundle branch block, including patients meeting Garboza criteria or unstable hemodynamically with additional bedside co showing severely reduced ejection fraction and regional wall abnormality can be considered as acute MI. So next is the posterior wall MI. As posterior myocardium is not visualized directly on a standard 12 lead ECG, reciprocal changes of STEMI is obtained in the anterior septal leads that is from B1 to V3 that is seen as horizontal XG depression with broad tall R waves and upright T waves and dominant R wave in V2. Next, talking about our T wave abnormalities, starting with hyperactive T wave. It is a defined feature of early STEMI that is seen between 5 to 30 minutes after infarction. Hyperacute T wave in infarction, they tend to be broad based, taller, more than 5 mm and 10 mm in limb leads and precordial leads. They may be symmetric or asymmetric associated with reciprocal changes. Next, talking about D winter sign, which is seen as more than 1 mm sloping ST depression with tall symmetric T waves, most commonly in the precordial leads along with ST elevation in AVR. This pattern of ECG was found to occur with LAD occlusion. Next, talking about Wellen syndrome, wherein type A has biphasic T waves, type B has deep symmetric T wave inversion. In the precordial leads, typically V2 to V3, it represents a reperfusion pattern in the setting of severe proximal LAD stenosis. Next, talking about T wave inversion in AVL. Isolated T wave inversion in AVL is associated with impending inferior wall MI and mid LAD lesion. Next, talking about ST elevation in AVR. ST elevation more than 1 mm in AVR with widespread deep ST depression more than 1 mm involving lead V2 to V6, lead 1, 2 and AVL can suggest LMCA insufficiency, proximal LAD or triple vessel disease, especially with pathologic Q waves and hemodynamic compromise. So while working in emergency department, one can keep in mind of patients who would benefit from PCI not meeting the traditional STEMI criteria. So hope this helps. Thank you.